Um, I met Tony a couple years ago. Um, he has become a really important part of my daily life. Um, so I have been talking to go talking about going to the Wall Seminar in Iowa, um, and I met V, um, the Paleo Boss Lady, that summer, and everyone was sharing their excitement and being, about being able to attend this event. And I had bought a ticket. Um, so like this one, the event sells out. And so I didn't have a ticket. So it's Sunday, and the seminar begins Wednesday. And I was talking to my husband, Todd. Hi, Todd. I don't know where you went. <laughs> and then it's like, I'm like, so bummed. I don't have a ticket. I'm kicking myself. So he, we decided I was going to go the next year. We were going to make it happen. Well, so I get up Monday morning. I'm cruising Facebook like we all do. Good morning. Um, and then um, on the Walls um, Protocol Facebook page, there's this guy that has a ticket available. And he's like, is there anybody in by Iowa that wants a ticket? And so I'm like, um, is Michigan close enough to Iowa? So um, the ticket was mine. And so um, I had to explain to Todd that I was leaving for Iowa the next day. <laughs> Tony says there's no coincidences. The ticket was meant to be mine. Um, so this guy, Tony, that has the ticket, I knew who he was. Um, my friend B had been to visit him, and he had this cool nonprofit that he started in Buffalo. So I'm really, really excited to meet this guy. So I jump in my car and then drive myself to Iowa. The hotel had a room left, and I meet Tony in the lobby. I'm telling him how grateful I am and how much I wanted to meet him, and he is like so excited that I was the one taking the ticket. And he's like, he, he wanted to meet me. But why me? Um, I'm just a girl from Michigan that has a mess. Like, I'm nobody. So, yeah, I'm a mess. Um, I was diagnosed in 2005, 2006, after years of health issues. Um, they go back to my teens. After years of fatigue and other weird things, and the doctors treating me like I was crazy. So things got bad. I lost use of my left hand and arm, my left hand. Um, I healed pretty quick and went back to normal life. I didn't really believe the neurologist. Like, that's not a real thing. Um, I chose not to do the spinal. I chose not to do any of the drugs at that time. Um, they're all in, we're in, all injected at that time, and I honestly was more afraid of needles than I was of MS. Um, so I always say my MS came with, in with Hurricane Katrina. Um, so the summer after um, I was diagnosed at, was Hurricane Katrina was MS um, in Ninth Ward, Louisiana. So I actually went down and did a mission trip, took a bunch of teenage ventures down to Louisiana, and we were in Ninth Ward doing cleanup. And they call it mudding and gutting, um, super dirty. And I was like, so if I'm going to have a problem, that's going to be where I'm going to have a problem. I was fine. So I uh, figured that that really wasn't a thing. Um, so I went back to living my life. Um, I have two kids. I was too busy for a mess. Uh, for years, that worked for me. And then it started to work less. Um, I hadn't really told anybody but Todd at that point that I had a mess. Nobody, not even my family knew. Um, I guess sometimes I was, I was ashamed, or I, I didn't really want to deal with the emotional responses of others. Um, I was overweight. I was tired. I wasn't ready to change my life. Um, so at this point, I had a hair salon out of my house. Um, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. I had two kids in high school and an overly busy life. Um, I had flares, um, but they were nothing major. Um, I figured out kind of how to hide them. Uh, my hands didn't work that great. My feet were numb. Um, my clients never noticed. What I've realized is that most people don't really notice us as much as we think they do. So then, um, about six years ago, things started to get bad. Uh, my legs weren't working. I couldn't stand. I couldn't walk. Up to this point, I had used walking to control my weight. I started working less and less. I started having to use a wheelchair to go anywhere. Uh, the neurologist at this point told me I wasn't going to get any better. Um, I had progressed to a different stage, and it was time for disability. Um, this was my second neurologist, and when I met him, he told me he didn't really know if the drugs at that point did anything, um, the older MS drugs. Um, and so um, when I started to decline, he was like, we've got to start throwing things at this. We've got to slow it down. Um, I really knew that wasn't 
the way for me. Um, it isn't that isn't for everybody, but you know, for me, it wasn't the thing. Things did get worse. Um, I had to close my business. I spent about a month unable to leave my bed without assistance. Um, I had to be pushed in the chair because my left side wouldn't work at all. Um, my arm was so numb that I would lose it um, under me when I was laying down and the lights were off. I begged for Todd just to put a pillow over my head and end it. Did you just hear that? So, during the worst of the worst, um, I started looking for answers. Um, researching, I came across a TED talk um, from this doctor from Iowa. She was saying that food could change things. Uh, so there, at this point, there was no book or protocols or anything available for this. Um, she'd written one, but it was out of print. She basically said nine cups of vegetables and paleo. I had no idea what paleo even was. So we had a plan. So as I was saying, so um, my husband Todd, at, at this point, he had never really cooked before, so he started cooking meals for me, paleo meals, uh, which was new to him. Uh, the kids helped out and supported uh, our house changing, and why did they support it? Well, very quickly after changing my diet, I started to get stronger. My arm became usable again. I could use the bathroom without help. The healing continued. Um, so back to me, Tony. Why did he want to meet me? Well, he, you're awesome. Well, he heard about this girl with MS who changed her life with food and then went on to do something he thought was cool. Um, in February 2017, I climbed 18,650 yeah! Even when I started, my guide thought, this is going to be a short trip. But I made it to the first camp, and he was surprised. Then I made it to the second, and he started to bleed. Holy, holy, which is slowly, slowly. I put one foot in front of the other. We made it to base camp. The morning of my descent, I woke up, and my tent was covered in icy snow. Just the three of us headed out. My guy, Hamza, his assistant was just supposed to be uh, personal health and serving meals and such. Uh, the thing about that high elevation is that you can't really breathe. It's kind of like breathing through a straw. The advice was don't look up because if you look up, when you see how far you have to go, you'll quit. I needed to look. I needed to see every step closer I was. So walking up an exploded volcano is kind of like walking up a sand hill. It is hard. I laid down a couple times and said out loud, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> oh, and I prayed a lot. <laughs> so um, when I got to the top, I cried like a baby. I uh, want to freak a couple of Tanzanians out, have a disabled woman who doesn't speak Swahili lose her shit. <laughs> Self back together, we took pictures, ate, then the porters showed up. These guys who were paid to carry gear were so excited I was going to make it to the top that they had to be there. Most of them had never been to the top themselves. Oh, and they came to help me get to the bottom. So what I never mentioned is though I'm pretty good at going up, my legs don't work so well to go down. <laughs> um, I didn't really care how I was going to get to the bottom. I only cared about seeing the snows of Kilimanjaro and being on the top of Africa. Uh, what I've learned in life is the views on the top, they're the best. Um, but so is challenging yourself to do that thing that you shouldn't be able to do. Uh, we're stronger than we ever give ourselves credit for. So do that thing. The one that's on your bucket list, don't wait. Um, one of the other things I've learned is how important community is. Uh, surrounding yourself with people that understand exactly what you're going through. Like my buddy Tony, and my friend David, and my friend V. There are no coincidences. I was meant to meet Tony, and David, and V, and Ron, and even all of you. And we were all meant to be a part of Change MS. Woo!